I wonder if any of you have been watching the new series of Alan Bennett's Talking Heads. The very first one, entitled Lady of Letters, starred Imelda Staunton as Irene Ruddock, a middle-aged woman who certainly isn't afraid to speak, or I should probably say, write her mind. As she peers out of her front room window, she observes the lives of those living around her and adopts a rather pessimistic view towards them. In an attempt to have her say and create change, she writes letters of complaint to those whose behaviour she deems unacceptable. But some of these accusations are serious and damaging, ranging from child neglect to prostitution, leading to police intervention and eventually her imprisonment. Although it sounds somewhat absurd for a mature woman to be sent to prison for writing angry letters, this is precisely how Bennett's writing is so clever. He defies social stereotypes and instead pairs together outrageous scenarios with the most unlikely culprits. Unfortunately, Irene is not the type of sweet and amiable lady who would offer you tea and biscuits if you visited her. Instead, she's living proof that minor criminal offences are not only committed by juvenile delinquents. Both Irene's personality and the crime she's accused of complement one another perfectly. Bennett, as always, holds up a mirror for us to behold ourselves as we really are. But what is more important is what he reveals to us about the people we, or society, or the church, or the government, have given up on. People who are, for any number of reasons, difficult. Who don't tick the boxes. And who appear not to care about that. What we are seeing, of course, is a picture of the alienated individual. The person who, for whatever reasons or circumstances, has painted themselves into a corner in life. These are the people it's easiest to dislike, even to hate. The ill-tempered receptionist the interfering and sometimes destructive neighbour, the carping and overcritical parent or partner, the person who cannot recognise kindness or acknowledge it when it's shown to them, the selfish, the controlling, the overbearing. All of us, in fact, because all of us have in some measure, for at least some of the time, been directly affected by unhappy people and become like them ourselves. The memories associated with them continue to wound us and unhealed wounds lead to hardness of heart. Bennett's Irene is not a bad person. She is a deeply wounded person. 
this in no way exonerates her for her treatment of the neighbours across the road, who she spies on and persecutes mercilessly. Neither does it oblige us to like her. Bennett does not ask us to like Irene. What he does do is to allow Irene an opportunity to reveal who she truly is, despite her new surroundings in prison. We see what appears to be a transformation of her personality, simply as a direct result of her being accepted by those around her. We sense, of course, the barbed nature of this acceptance. She is often laughed at, but she is also given a sense of belonging and purpose. And as a result of this, a new person emerges. When a person is accepted unconditionally, either because a particular set of circumstances makes that more possible, or because love in its true guise gives them the benefit of the doubt. They get another chance at life. They can reveal their true selves to others, and perhaps to themselves, as Irene seems to do. And isn't this what God in Christ asks us, his church, to do for the difficult people of the world? Jesus knew all about difficult people. He had plenty of them in his small group of twelve disciples. There was Peter, always speaking out of turn, speaking without thinking, putting his foot in it. There were James and John, the sons of thunder, who wanted to wreak terrible revenge on a town or village that rejected them. There was Thomas, who asked awkward questions. There was Judas, who totally misunderstood Jesus and ended up killing himself. And outside his close followers, there was the Syrophoenician woman and the Samaritan woman at the well. And in each and every case, Jesus offered these difficult people acceptance and a sense of belonging. So what is Bennett inviting us to do in all this? I don't think he's talking about the need for patient kindness in the hope that our being nice to someone will somehow transform them over time. Irene gets that kind of niceness from the social workers and the occasional police officer who visit her. I think he's asking us to try to at least imagine where the annoying, mean, miserable individuals who may figure in our lives are really coming from. What is the unbearable grief that binds them to itself? What is the failure or disappointment or heartbreak from which they will never recover? Where have they been crushed and humiliated? How can we begin to reach them in these places without them realising that we are doing that? because that would only hurt or humiliate them further. Of course, there are people like Irene all around us. There are some people like Irene in most church communities. And there are some people in most church communities 
who will listen to them and offer unconditional acceptance. And if we want to be truly inclusive, non-judgmental church, we must learn how to be a listening and an accepting community where difficult people like Irene can feel that they belong. So may it be that we will care for and look out for the difficult people not only in our churches but in our neighbourhoods and in our world. For Christ's sake. Amen.